say cheating on a good person is like throwing away a diamond and picking up a rock. On today's case, Mrs. Cribb says that her husband, Mr. Cribb, must be a geologist because his rock collection is extensive. She says her husband's infidelity has left their marriage in limbo, and she is tired of him playing skip rock with her love. She's here today to let him know that diamonds are rare, and this diamond is about to be single. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Crib versus Crib. Thank you very much, Mrs. Crib, Mr. Crib. Mrs. Crib, you have come into my courtroom, you say, ready to sign the divorce papers. You say you refuse to be in a loveless marriage one more day. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Crib, you admit that your marriage has had its ups and downs, but say today you'd like to try and resolve your issues peacefully. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. and Mrs. Crib, you've actually been married quite a long time. According to my court papers, you've been together 23 years, married for 18 years. So you've made a real family, Mrs. Crick. Yes. yes um, so you have to tell me what gets us into divorce court today. Like you said, uh, we've been together for quite some time, mm -hmm. and I feel like I've been taking care of... holding it down as far as taking care of the kids and just trying to maintain whatever is left of my life, and um, I just want some type of resolve. Um, we don't talk about our relationship at all. We co-parent well, but it's never a, a conversation of our actual relationship. And... So the, the, the fire has died out of this marriage, is what you're telling yes. me? Yes, yes. Mr. Cribb, you heard what your wife says. What do you say? I mean, I want peace. We get along very well, but it's just... it's not working. I mean, like, we, we get along well with the kids, and Together, it's like oil and water. We just don't mix. I'd love to know how you all met and what got us to this point, because okay. I can't imagine, after being together so many years, mm -hmm. there were not some happy times. Why don't you take me back? Okay. Um, well, uh, we met, I guess I'm gonna say, at his job. Um, I, he works for transportation, let's just say, mm -hmm. and... Um, his route was on my route to my school and, and work, and um, that's how we met. He was your bus driver. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. You flirted with the bus driver. Uh, he, the the bus driver flirted with me. Okay. Like, he he all seen right. all this. <laughs> okay. I got it. I got um, it. So you know, he got my attention. We we ta we talked and we went out uh, a few times. He's and... about ten years older than you are. Yeah. Yeah. So, Mr. Crib, when you first met the now Mrs. Crib. Were you looking for a relationship? Were you looking for some sort of long-term thing? Or were you just attracted to I thought to that maybe ladies? it would just be, you know, a little something. You know how people get in relationships? And, mm -hmm. You know, they have a little fun here and there. I didn't know it was going to, you know, get into something serious as it did, Yana. And 23 years later, you all are together, but facing a crossroads. Um, what was his relationship status, Mrs. Cribb, when you first met? Okay, so when we first met, uh, he was in a relationship, um, like, legally, and... Uh, Meaning married. Yeah. <laughs> and, okay. um... Y'all don't say what y'all need to say. <laughs> That's not called in a relationship <laughs> legally. That's called I'm married to somebody else. So, yes. like, if you wanted to marry him on that day, I you could. were legally prohibited <laughs> from doing so. Right. Okay, I got it. <laughs> All right, so, Mrs. Cribb, it moved to a time mm -hmm. when you both were, became available, is that correct? Yes. So yes. tell me about the relationship, because mm -hmm. um, it sounds like there was some encumbrances in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Were there any red flags from the beginning? Yes, Your Honor, there okay. was red flags. Uh, so there was um, an instance with um, another woman being pregnant. Um, and this is... I didn't find out about the child until after we got married. How old was the child? Uh, when I found out about her, she was almost two. When I met, actually met her, she was two. Well, she forgave me for that, but... Wait, she... wait, wait, hold up. Okay, Clearly, okay. she hasn't. I... I, <laughs> I but did. But she just brought it up to me 23 years later, so... Right. I mean, it, it is a... It's, it's, it's a big thing, but it's not a big thing now because the way we have our family and the love that we share... According to my... my, my numbers, didn't you have a child also around yes. that age? Yes. Yes, so... And the plot thickens. <laughs> yes, Y'all not explaining everything. <laughs> yes. So, 
um, I found out we were pregnant at the same time. There didn't is know an it. issue. We didn't well. know about each... Well, I didn't know about her. I can't say if she, whether... Well, actually, I do know that she knew about me. But um, moving forward, we had a conversation, you know... He was being honest with either one of us, so it just came into that. And both children have to grow up as siblings, and so y'all had to figure it out, basically. Yeah, we did, and, and we did. We Mr. Did. Crib, you said she forgave you for that, so help me. So now it's your turn. Well, she forgave me for it after she found out about it. Mr. Mr. Crib, wait a minute, hold up. Okay. Don't, don't deflect and put something on her. How, how do you look me in the face and say, quote, she found out? Why aren't you saying, I told her? I Robert, am I wrong? No. Okay, why, why aren't you saying, I told her and she forgave me? You prefaced it with, she found out and forgave me. So, some tells me you were dishonest. Am I right or wrong? You're right. You're, You're right, right Yana. But the, I didn't know that she was pregnant at the time. But then when I found out, I was trying to figure out how I waited to tell her. It's just that I was... Uh, you know, I just couldn't bring myself to tell her because... So, in, in a two-year time period... Yeah, I... While your wife now mm -hmm. is actually pregnant... That's right. You go to the hospital, y'all probably done had the baby shower and everything. Yeah, he should have told me as soon as he found so out. So, you That's... mean to tell me in that time period... You had plenty of time. I'm sorry. You had plenty of time, bro. It's too afraid to tell her. After that, he was texting other women and... It was later found out that he was sleeping with his ex. What's going on with you? You well, can't keep it in your pants. That's number <laughs> one. Keep going. No, it's not that I can't keep it in my pants, Your Honor. It's that... It jumps out. <laughs> <laughs> she... She, I, she used sex as a tool. Like, she'd give me... She'd have sex with me, but then maybe once or twice a year. Like, one time she said, ask me to do something. And I was like... No, because, you know, you ask the way you ask me. And she said, okay, then, well, I'll just add some more days on before you get some sex or, or weeks. So, you in know, other so words, it, sex, is, sex is a weapon. As much as he goes o above and beyond to destroy us, he doesn't do that to, to save us. He's not romantic. Like, you want sex, but you want me to just, whoop, open it up? That's not how it works. I have to be taken care of from the inside out, just like I take care of you, but yet we're supposed to have sex. How? I'd love to hear your response to that. So you say the cheating continued. I'd like to hear about that. Yes, it did. Um, uh, I was talking to my son on his phone, and my son jokingly says, well, oh, he must trust you, or you, might, you guys must be doing well now because you have his phone. And I'm like, I'm not going to go through his phone. Like, I'm not going to look for something and just hurt myself. And, um, I looked. <laughs> I looked. They all do. <laughs> mm -hmm. They all do. All the I did. They um, all do. And it was there, uh, three messages down, and it was just basically him saying that, um, he couldn't wait to be inside this woman again. So that's right there. That's a mission. Like, I didn't have to, like, you need to see decode else. it or anything like that. Right. Like, yeah. it's like, say, not I want to get with you, I can't wait to get with you again. Again, exactly. exactly. Tag your it, Mr. Crib. <laughs> well, Your Honor, it's... Man, it... Mm. It's, there was no sex. I mean, it was... Sex was, like, once or twice a year. So basically what and you're telling those... me is you felt like your intimate life was over with your wife at that time? And then when I tried to talk to her, she would, like, snap on me. I wouldn't want to have sex with you if I thought that you were going and dipping your wand in other pools. I mm -hmm. just wouldn't. Right, I wouldn't right. want you to touch me. Absolutely. Yeah, I, right. would, I wouldn't know, you know, if where you've been and who you've been with. Right, right. You know, I would be afraid. Do you see what I mean? Yes. And I would probably be mad. That was years yeah. ago. But if I have all these things in my head, I can't sit there and look at you like you're attractive and I want to be intimate, you know? Do you hear that, Mr. Cribb? Yeah, I hear it. So, Mrs. Cribb, do me a favor. Talk mm -hmm. to your husband mm -hmm. and tell him how it makes you feel to find all this evidence that he is being intimate with other people mm -hmm. and then comes home and wants to be intimate with you. You tell him. Well, honestly, it makes me feel 
unattractive. It makes me feel insecure, um, angry. Um, and you're right, you said the other day that you felt like I'm holding on to resentment, and I am. And that's why I really suggested counseling, and I've, I've made so many attempts, and I just don't feel like you take it serious. I, um, I always feel like I, I speak from the heart, but I don't get that back. I'm always willing for my marriage, and I don't, as much as he goes o above and beyond to destroy us, he doesn't do that to, to save us. He's not romantic, like, you want sex, but you want me to just, boop, open it up? That's not how it works. I have to be taken care of from the inside out, just like I take care of you, but yet we're supposed to have sex. How? I'd love to hear your response to that. I try to be romantic. I do things with her. And then it's... I mean, it's like she tells me I can never be your friend, you know. I mean, she'll treat me as though I'm less, less value to her. I mean, I know I did a lot of bad things, did, but stop, I... Stop, right there. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what you just said? Yes, ma'am. I know I did a lot of bad things. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think that because of those bad things... Yes, yes. She has been hurt to the point where she does not like you. Right. Absolutely. Okay? Love you to death. Mm hmm Remembers the day that she fell in love with you. Right, right. But doesn't like you. Right. Because you have not been good to her. Do you see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. Her new attitude is, I'm gonna hurt you as much as you have hurt me mm -hmm. and let you see how it feels. Right, right. Everybody sleep, but I don't see her and I don't see this other guy. Are we talking about this same gentleman? No, a different guy. Okay. Oh, and another one. And then they were on the balcony making out. I grabbed them, was about to throw them over the balcony, and then everybody broke, broke us up, and I just left after that. So, Mrs. Crib, you did disrespect the house. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. You have been hurt in this marriage also, according yeah. to you, right? Yes, Your Honor. Tell me what, what hurts you have had. <sighs> Well, Your Honor, she's not an angel as well. I mean, I know all the stuff been put on me, but, I mean, she goes out with her friends. She comes home, like, used to come home at 5 in the morning, no explanation. Mm -hmm. Or, like, one time we broke up, she, she went out with a friend, came back at, I don't know, 6, and then I asked her where she go. She just laughed in my face. So, at that point, I just... You know, I moved out. A week later, I come back, and the guy that she was interested in, he was there. So at that point, you know, I was with my aunt. I moved in with my ex while she was dating this other guy. I just want to make sure I'm clear. Mm -hmm. You left, mm -hmm. and within a week, you came back, and somebody else was there. Somebody else was there. The guy that she was already talking to. By the, by, by the way... Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. You left that situation mm -hmm. and decided, I'm going to go back and move with my ex, who you had already had a relationship with, Am I right? Right, a week later, yeah. So we talking right. tit for tat. Yes, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Yes, Your Honor. That's Guns completely blazing. tit for tat. Guns blazing. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. So but can I add something, Your Honor? He, when he keeps on saying that, oh, this guy was there, uh, he was not living there, we were not having sex, um, he was there to fix things uh, around the house because... You weren't so being intimate with this man? I was not, no. No, I was not. No, Your Honor. But no. y'all ended up together, though. During the time that he's talking about, no, I was not. Let's, let's just say it that. It became a it, intimate it, relationship. It became an intimate relationship after, and it w when it was after was when you moved in with the ex, and then... And when you were talking so about some hurt, Your Tid Honor, that was hurt. Mm -hmm. Tid for yeah. Tid. This and is what I'm talking yeah. about. Well, there's a point where we had a party one night. We had a lot of friends over. I had to go to work early in the morning. I go into the living room. Everybody's asleep, but I don't see her, and I don't see this other guy. So I go out to the balcony. Are we they talking are... about the same gentleman? No, a different guy. Okay. And... Oh, and another one. And then they were on the balcony making out. And so, I, you know, I grabbed them, was about to throw them over the balcony, and then everybody broke, broke us up, and I just left after that, you know. 
So, Mrs. Cribb, you did disrespect the house and and I did and make out with. But I wasn't making out. That's that. That's his truth. That is not the truth. Y'all were holding each other. I saw you. But you just I wouldn't just snap. Y'all just standing there. Just... So wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Were they kissing or were they? Yeah, they were kissing. They were, were holding kissing. like. Was he close to me and rubbing like? He was inappropriate. Yeah, he was inappropriate. Yes. So in other words, you were not having sex with this man. Is your mm -hmm. point? Yes. However, it was disrespectful it was. of the whole. It was. Tit for tat. Yep. Tit for tat. Mr. Mr. Crib. Yes, ma'am. What what I am hearing right here. Mm -hmm is the prime example of hurt people hurt people. Yes. But I haven't heard you say that I want my marriage. I have not heard you say that I'm willing to fight for my marriage. I have Absolutely. not heard you say that this is the woman that I love and I don't need a backup plan. See, when I asked you Absolutely. to talk to her the way she had talked to you, what my expectation was is that you would turn to your wife and say, I'm done with that baby. Mm -hmm. I don't need a backup plan. I'm not moving in with nobody else. Whatever time it takes for me to win back your trust, I'm willing to take that time. If you can't say that, mm -hmm. I'm not mad at you, but you gotta let her go. Mrs. Cribb? Yes. Do you have the answers that you said you came here to get? Uh, I... I feel like I do. I... Would you like me to serve the papers? Yes, please. Robert, will you please retrieve the papers? Sure. Mr. Cribb, I've given you ample opportunity to make <clears throat> a statement to your wife that you want this marriage to work. <clears throat> you have not taken that opportunity. To the contrary, not only have you not taken that opportunity, you have resisted it. And I don't know why you're resisting it, but you're resisting it says to me that you're not willing to do the work necessary. Mrs. Cribb, is that what it says to you? Absolutely. And I feel like I've made that very clear over the course of the years because he likes to say that, oh, you know, he didn't get this and he didn't get that during the relationship. But there was a lot of things I didn't get either. And I want to feel wanted. And just like you said, I've been screaming out trying to, to be seen by this man for so many years. I shouldn't have to do this. Your wife wants to fight for this marriage. I fight for it, but it's... I'm I, not... Okay. Don't you dare. Mr. Cribb, yeah, tell the truth. I don't understand. Just, no, okay. tell the I truth. I understand a lot. If you don't want to let her go. Okay, I don't want to do this anymore. This is the case of Lana Cribb versus Derek Cribb. The plaintiff has properly signed the papers pro se. Serve the papers. Mr. Cribb. Yes, sir. You've been served. Right. Mrs. Cribb, you can now take those papers into the New Jersey Civil Court. Okay. And start formal divorce proceedings. Yes, Your Honor. Thank and you. I suggest mm -hmm. you go on with your life. Thank you, Your Honor. Find your happy. I will. Thank because you. it is not with him. <laughs> Robert, that's as real as it will get. Mr. Cribb has been out of this marriage mm -hmm. for a very long time. I mean, when a woman is denying you intimacy, why go find it somewhere else? He's doing that. To throw it in her face? To throw it in her face. What a best, that's the best yeah. way to put it. What I can legitimately say is just like that movie Frozen, mm -hmm. let it go, let it go. Yeah. I'm glad for her. It's Sorry. time for her to move on. Yeah. Made in Georgia.